Welcome. Welcome everyone to First Congregational Church of Shrewsbury here on the Common, our last summer Sunday service. Um, we go to two services per Sunday. We didn't know we were going to do that, but, uh, but um, something called Delta creeped up on us and uh, rudely interrupted our idea that this was over. So we will have a 930 indoor service with choir and bells um, with full program. All the programs will go. Masks are indoors, outdoors, no masks, obviously. Um, and we will continue the outdoor services at 11 as the weather cools. It's warmer at 11 starting next Sunday right here where you are um, until the weather doesn't allow us to do that. Um, and we will continue having the 930 indoor. If it rains, then there will be no outdoor service. There will only be the 930 indoor. So recovenanting Sunday or homecoming Sunday is next Sunday. Youth group and everything else restarts. Um, and I will stop talking and let our deacon of the week greet you, Sue Russell. Good morning. Good morning. My name is Sue Russell, and on behalf of the Board of Deacons, I would like to welcome you to our service of worship this morning. We are very, very happy that you joined us. If you are visiting us for the first time today, we'd like you to stop at the usher's table in the back, or you can go inside the church and visit our welcome center, and you will be updated on all the programs that the church has to offer. Again, we're very happy that you are here with us today. I do have a couple of announcements. Uh, the first one is on behalf of Deb Del Dotto. Uh, Deb Del Dotto and Christian Education would like to remind you that Sunday School will begin next Sunday, September 19th, as well as the Blessing of the Backpacks. Finalized plans are still being worked, worked on due to the updated restrictions of COVID-19. Please watch for Sunday School updates this week and looking ahead for final details. It is also requested that if you have children of preschool age through middle school or teenagers interested in confirmation that you fill out the survey form that went out through constant contact this week. Ken Ward will also have registration forms for Sunday school at a table this morning in the back near the ushers, near the ushers table. Please stop by after the service to fill out your registration form for Sunday school if you have not done so. And Deb Del Dotto and Ken would be able to answer any questions about Sunday school. And on behalf of Music Ministry, uh, we would like to remind you of the next Arts on the Green program. Chuck and Mud and the Hole in the Dam Band will be performing right here on the Town Common on Saturday, September 25th at 4 p.m. Many of you have heard them and know that it will be a wonderful concert filled with great singing, lots of laughs, and a great opportunity for fellowship and camaraderie. Please mark your calendars, bring your favorite chair, and plan to attend. The last announcement this morning is on behalf of Mission and Outreach. On behalf of Mission and Outreach, we wanted to let you know that we extended an invitation to the families at IHN to come to our church picnic this year as our guests. Three of the families have graciously accepted our invitation and are very much looking forward to joining us this morning at the picnic. A very big thank you to the social circles for their assistance with us. Please welcome these families as they join us for a time of fellowship and fun. Thank you very much. Thank you, Sue. So we are celebrating on this Sunday. Of course, we have our picnic, you can see being set up at 12 noon right after the service. And we're celebrating the sacrament of baptism for Anne Elizabeth Kenny and her family, where we welcome them to the service here. So, you're all very welcome. Will you join me um, by first passing the peace to one another as you feel comfortable with a greeting, um, whether it's physical or a nod to your neighbors, 
and I encourage you to get up and mill about for a few minutes. Okay, can I ask you to regather wherever you were and join me in our call to worship? I hate to break it up actually because you've enjoyed it so much. Okay, the call to worship based on the prophet Isaiah is found in your order of service. But you, Israel, my servant, Jacob, whom I have chosen. Do not fear, for I am with you. I will strengthen you. I will help you. Let us worship God. Please rise as you may be able and sing the beloved children's hymn, Jesus Loves Me, This I Know.
please be seated. We continue our worship with our unison prayer of confession. Let us pray together. Lord, hear my prayer and my praise, and open with your Holy Spirit my heart, for the sake of Jesus Christ, that I may repent my sins, believe in Jesus in life and in death, and grow in Christian life and thought. Hear this prayer, O God, through Jesus Christ. Amen. Sisters and brothers, declare with me the good news of the gospel. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. I would like to invite um, the family of Annie and also the godparents to come forward and also any children who would like to watch the baptism up close can come towards the uh, altar table where the font is with their parents too if they want. Well, welcome, Kenny family and friends and relatives and children beyond Annie herself. All right. On this windy yet beautiful day. So, dear friends, as we come to the f this font of living water, let us recall the meaning of our own baptism. For just as the body is one and many members, and all members of the body, though many, are one body, so it is with Christ. For by the Spirit we are all baptized into one body, whether Jew or Greek, slave or free, no matter who we are, no matter where we are on life's journey. And we were all made to drink from the one spirit. The sacrament of baptism is an outward and visible sign of the grace of God, inasmuch as the promise of the gospel is not only to us, but also to our children. Baptism with water and the Holy Spirit is the mark of their acceptance into the care of Christ's church the sign and seal of their participation in God's forgiveness and the beginning of their growth in full Christian faith and discipleship. And so I have questions first to the parents. So, parents of any, do you desire to have your child baptized into the faith and family of Jesus Christ, if so, say, we do. Will you encourage this child to renounce the powers of evil and to receive the freedom of new life in Christ? If so, say, we will with the help of God. Will you teach this child that she may be led to profess Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior? If so, say, we will with the help of God. Do you promise by the grace of God to be Christ's disciples? to follow in the way of our Savior, to resist oppression and evil, to show love and justice, and to witness to the work and word of Jesus Christ as best as you are able. If so, say, we will, we do, with the help of God. And do you promise, according to the grace given you, to grow with this child in the Christian faith, to help this child to be a faithful member of the Church of Jesus Christ, by celebrating Christ's presence, by furthering Christ's mission in the world, and by offering the nurture of the Christian church so that she may affirm her baptism. If so, say we will, we do, with the help of God. And who are the sponsors? There's 
two sponsors are all here. Okay, these. All right, so the four of you, these are for you. Are you ready, with God's help, to guide and encourage any by counsel and example, in prayer and with love, to follow the way of Jesus Christ? If so, say together, we are. All right, thank you. Okay. I ask this of all of you, let us unite with the church in all times and places in confessing our faith in the triune God. Do you believe in God? If you do, say, we believe in God. Do you believe in Jesus Christ? If so, say it together, we believe in Jesus Christ. And do you believe in the Holy Spirit? If so, say it together, we believe in the Holy Spirit. The Lord be with you. We thank you, God, for the gift of creation called forth by your saving word. Before the world had shape and form, your spirit moved over the waters. Out of the waters of the deep, you formed the firmament and brought forth the earth to sustain life. In the fullness of time, you sent Jesus Christ, who was nurtured in the water of Mary's womb. Jesus was baptized by John in the water of the River Jordan, became living water to a woman at the Samaritan well, washed the feet of the disciples, and sent them forth to baptize all nations by water and the Holy Spirit. So, gracious God, we ask you to bless this water that by your spirit, those who confess the name of Jesus Christ, that sin may no have, have no power over them, create new life in the one baptized today, that she may rise in Christ. Glory to you, eternal God, who was and is and shall always be world without end. Amen. The deacon has a question for the congregation. That's all right. That's all right. Um, do you, the members of this congregation, representing the whole Church of Jesus Christ, receive this child into your love and care? Do you promise to uphold and encourage her parents in the fulfillment of their covenant? By what name will you, your child be called? Anne Elizabeth Kenny. Anne Elizabeth Kenny. Here we go. Anne Elizabeth, I baptize you in the name of the Father. <laughs> and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Anne Elizabeth, I sign you with the sign of the cross and mark you as Christ's own forever. How about that? <laughs> okay, we're, we're, we're almost done, we're almost done. The Holy Spirit be upon you, Annie, child of God, disciple of Christ, a member of the church. As we sing our hymn, I will walk with Annie as long as she lets me. And then when she doesn't, I will give her to her mom. And we can all greet Annie as we sing to the tune, uh, Morning Has Broken, our baptismal song. Ready?
Okay. Oh, you now, know, Jim. I give you back. Come here, Annabelle. Hi, good job. Good job. Bye, bye. Good job. Sorry. No, it's okay. On behalf of all of the members of the First Congregational Church of Shrewsbury, we'd like to present you with this baptismal certificate, uh, this rose, and especially this baptismal blanket. We wanted you to know that it was handmade by one of the members of our Hands for Hope ministry in the church. And we're hoping that every time you wrap Annie in the blanket, that you will know that it comes with all the love and prayers of everyone at the church that Annie's life will be blessed with love, happiness, and good health. Congratulations. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Maybe you can take all this. Oh, all right. Thank you. 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 Gracious God, you have filled the world with joy by giving us the gift of Jesus. Bless Annie. May she be filled with joy. May she never be ashamed to confess a personal faith in you. Bless the parents and the sponsors, the godparents of Annie. May she always, may they always show their gratitude for the life you have given by loving and caring for Annie Elizabeth Kenny. Bless these your people, faithful God. Unite them in peace of Christ and of the company of the Holy Spirit. And let us say together, Amen. You may go in the peace of Christ. Blessings to you and to you. You did such a good job. <laughs> such a good job. I didn't think it was going to happen. Amazing. All right. First reading this morning is Genesis. In the beginning when God created the heavens and the earth, the earth was a formless void and darkness covered the face of the deep, while a wind from God swept over the face of the waters. Then God said, let there be light, and there was light. And God saw the light was good, and God separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And there was evening, and there was morning, the first day. And God said, Let there be a dome in the midst of the waters, and let it separate the waters from the waters. So God made the dome and separated the waters that were under the dome from the waters that were above the dome. And it was so. God called the dome sky. And there was evening, and there was morning, the second day. And God said, Let the waters under the sky be gathered together in one place, and let the dry land appear. And it was so. God called the dry land earth, and the waters that were gathered together he called seas. And God saw that it was good. Then God said, Let the earth put forth vegetation, plants yielding seed, and fruit trees of every kind on earth that bear fruit with the seed in it. And it was so. The earth brought forth vegetation, plants yielding seed of every kind, and the trees of every kind bearing fruit with the seed in it. And God saw that it was good. And there was evening, and there was morning, the third day. And God said, Let there be lights in the dome of the sky to separate the day from the night. And let them be signs for the seasons and for days and years. And let them be lights in the dome of the sky to give light upon the earth. And it was so. God made the two great lights, 
the great light to rule the day, and the lesser light to rule the night and the stars. God set them in the dome of the sky to give light upon the earth, to rule over the day and over the night, and to separate the light from the darkness. And God saw that it was good. And there was evening, and there was morning, the fourth day. And God said, Let the waters bring forth swarms of living creatures, and let birds fly above the earth across the dome of the sky. So God created the great sea monsters, and every living creature that moves of every kind, with which the waters swarm, and every winged bird of every kind. And God saw that it was good. God blessed them, saying, Be fruitful and multiply, and fill the waters in the seas, and let the birds multiply on the earth. And there was evening, and there was morning, the fifth day. And God said, Let the earth bring forth living creatures of every kind, cattle and creeping things, and wild animals of the earth of every kind. And it was so. God made the wild animals of the earth of every kind, and the cattle of every kind, and everything that creeps upon the ground of every kind. And God saw that it was good. Then God said, Let us make humankind in our image, according to our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the birds of the air, and over the cattle, and over all the wild animals of the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps upon the earth. So God created humankind in his image. In the image of God, he created them. Male and female, he created them. God blessed them. And God said to them, Be fruitful and multiply, and fill the earth and subdue it, and have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, and over every living thing that moves upon the earth. God said, See, I have given you every plant yielding seed that is upon the face of the earth, and every tree with the seed and its fruit. You shall find them for food. And to every beast of the earth, and to every bird, bird of the air, and to everything that creeps on the earth, everything that has the breath of life, I have given every green plant for food. And it was so. God saw everything that he had made, and indeed, it was very good. There was evening, there was morning, the sixth day. Then the heavens and the earth were finished, and all their multitude. And on the seventh day, God finished the work that he had done. And he rested on the seventh day from all the work that he had done. So God blessed the seventh day and hallowed it because on it God rested from all the work that he had done in creation. The second reading this morning is John chapter 1 verses 1 through 5. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through him, and without him, not one thing came into being. What has come into being in him was life, and the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it.
Please be seated. <clears throat> Baptism that we celebrated this morning is a feast of creation because of that symbol of water which unites us to the act of creation in our sacred tradition to the baptism of Christ in the River Jordan. And it affirms the goodness of God. We just heard the entire first creation narrative in the book of Genesis, um, that familiar story where God says that what God has created is tov meod. It is very good. It's hard to affirm the goodness of God's creation when things go wrong and things go wrong all the time in every moment of every day we know this of course we need no reminder we hear the sirens of ambulances police cars and fire trucks we read newspapers or watch the news we know things go wrong yet the creation story from Gen genesis affirms that creation is very good. Tov me'od. In other words, the world is good. The earth is good. Above all, life is good. To be alive is its own blessing. In John's Gospel, um, which is a repetition of the creation narrative but focused on Christ, it says, in the beginning. But this time, it talks about the Word who was with God and who is God, and that all things are created through Christ, including, and above all, life itself. As it is written, what has come into being in Him was life, and the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. Here again, the focus is life. Life, which in Hebrew is chai, is a sacred symbol. Um, some folks who are Jewish will wear the words in Hebrew around their neck because life is a sacred imperative in Judaism. In Greek, it is called zoe. In Latin, vita. And those words are in our vocabulary, like vital or vitality. So in Judaism, our ancestral faith, life is to be preserved at all costs. Nearly every commandment is suspended in order to save a life because the commandments are meant to protect life. In Christianity, we are not promised eternal heaven or eternal spirits. We are promised eternal life. Aeonia zoe in the Greek. Vita eterna in the Latin, in other words, eternal life, life without end. We just celebrated in Annie's baptism a celebration of life and eternal life, and it is grounded in creation. Annie symbolic symbolically is submerged in the waters of creation where she joins Christ in his birth, death, and resurrection, and the rising out of the waters would be a symbol of resurrection to eternal life. That Annie lives and shall rise. And this is Tov Meod. It is very good. I was um, reading some stories uh, about 
9-11, now that we are the 20th anniversary of that event, which changed the United States and the world forever, was yesterday, as we all know. And I read about, in the Atlantic, a story about Bobby McIlvain, who was a 26-year-old um, who had to go to a conference just to set up for a friend of his. He didn't work at the World Trade Center. But he had to go and help his friend. He worked um, at Merrill Lynch nearby, but he didn't, never had any reason to go into the two towers. And the conference was at the restaurant um, at the top of one of the towers. And he was killed um, at the age of 26. He was, had just proposed to his fiance. Um, he had gone to Princeton um, and was, from, from what I've read, an incredible young person. And he kept diaries and journals since he was 13. And in it, he wrote something that struck me. He wrote, to care for another, this is life. He was writing about this, about his parents, about his girlfriend. He was given to writing poetry um, and was very, very romantic, apparently, and wrote, so he wrote all his feelings down, and those survived. The only thing that survived beyond that um, was his uh, wallet, which they found. To care for another, this is life. Another thing that I thought about when I was reflecting upon today was a Jewish rabbi, an Orthodox rabbi, who talked about creation and why we are here. He tells a story of a young man who goes to yeshiva, to a Jewish school of learning, and the Rav Yeshiva, the head of the school, um, was there. And the, the, the guy is coming from the United States and he's going to study in Paris at this school, this seminary where you learn Torah and Talmud, um, which is a big part of observant Judaism. And he got there and he said to the Rav, the, the head of the school, I need to call my mother. And the Rav Yeshiva said, you need? And he said, well, well yeah, I, I need, I need to call. And he said, he said, why were we created? And of course, he didn't have an answer. He said, we were created because we are needed by God. Every individual, every life is needed. So ask me it again. And then the boy said, well, the, the young man said, my mother needs me to call. Here's the phone. It's not what I need, but rather I am needed. Who needs me? How can I serve the other? And to quote Bobby who died, 20 years ago in the prime of life to care for the other this is life to care for any this is life to love one another this is life so I wanted to share those reflections with you on this final Sunday summer a beautiful breezy day when we can Enjoy the goodness of creation in spite of the pandemic, in spite of 20 years ago that changed everything we thought of as normal. Certainly, we will never enter an airport the way we used to. I remember showing up five minutes before a flight. They would call the gate, hold the flight, and I'd run on. And you can't do that anymore. 
everything has changed. And now with this pandemic, everything has changed again. For my students at Boston College who are Gen Z and certainly don't remember anything from 9-11, this is their 9-11. We remember, and we should take note, that every two days in the United States, it is 9-11, because every two days, 3,000 people die of COVID-19. Every two days. All of them, tragically, 99%, 99.9% unvaccinated are dying every two days. And so I was thinking about this. I was thinking about Bobby, his life, and so many other lives. This is only one of so many stories. And I was thinking, when we are offered the chance to what they say in Hebrew, pikuach nefesh, to save the life, we must take it. We must take it. If the vaccine is offered to us, we must take it because to preserve a life is ultimate. Because we are needed and to care for the other is life. And we can't care for the other if we are not here. So life is difficult, no doubt. But life is also not only good, but very good. And the promise of eternal life is good beyond measure. And we celebrate all those things this morning. I am glad that you are here with me, with one another. And I will turn our service over now to Curtis, who will lead us in our offertory music. pray together. Holy God, may these scraps of paper and bits of metal serve as symbols of our deep desire for your love and grace to transform our time, effort, and substance into works of creative compassion for each other, for our wider community, and for the world beyond. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, 
who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, world without end. Amen. I'm aware that we did not do joys and concerns, but time was short. But let us pray for a moment together. Gracious God, we lift up to you all our joys and concerns. We give you thanks for Annie's baptism. We give you thanks for creation, for preservation, and all the benefits of this earthly life. We lift up to you those in distant lands who are suffering and in our own land. We remember Afghanistan and its troubles. We remember our divided country. We remember those in hospitals with COVID-19. We remember those who are afraid. We lift up to you all those who in this transitory life are in sorrow, need sickness, or any other adversity. We give you thanks for the joys of this life, for friendships, for family, for this community of faith in this place. And we unite in the words that Jesus taught us by saying together, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. We close our worship by singing together for the beauty of the earth. shown yourself to be true Protestants, 
six verses. There's a joke about this ecumenical gathering in Belfast, Northern Ireland, between Catholics and Protestants. And when it came to the hymn, the Catholics gave up after two verses, but the Protestants went for all ten. And they were just like, they kept singing, looking over, and the Catholics were like, oh my God, we're not going to keep singing. So I was thinking about you all in that context, and you kept singing to the praise and delight of our Puritan forebears buried over in Mountain View. Okay. And now, dear friends, go forth into the world in peace. The peace of God, which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of God's Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, and the blessing of God, the Creator, the Redeemer, and the Giver of life be upon you and all those whom you love, and upon Annie and all those who care for her, this day and forevermore. Amen. <laughs>